Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you all for joining today. Super, super excited about today's event. Um, today is called, what we're going to cover is the PMO Lifecycle Building, Running, and Shutting Down. How to Run a PMO. So welcome everyone. Really, really excited about it. Okay, let's jump into it. So the one thing I know, it's PMOs. I've been doing PMOs for the last 19 years. I ran 10 PMOs. Started in AT&T Wireless. I ran my first PMO, it was a directed PMO. Then Singular Wireless, second PMO. Then I went to Microsoft, I ran seven PMOs there. Both directive, supportive, across uh, information technology, operations, marketing, services, multiple different areas. Then I, um, And now I'm at University of Washington running my largest PMO to date. It's a directive PMO. Many, many FTEs, vendors, um, functional managers. And uh, like I said, there's one thing I know is PMOs, and I'm excited to share this information today. But who am I? My name is Bill Dow. I have 30 plus years of hands-on experience. University of Washington, Microsoft. Um, I'm Canadian. I've worked in the uh, British Columbia government. Um, some government offices there. I have my own company, Dow Publishing LLC. Been a speaker around the world, uh, from London, England to India, all over North America. And I am a four-time author. Actually, I'm a five-time author. So PMO Lifecycle, Building, Running, and Shutting Down, Project Management Communication Tools, Tactical Guide for Building a PMO, and Project Management Communication Bible. And I just released, and that's what I'm excited to tell you, is the PMO service offering, selecting the right ones for your PMO. Recognized around the world, right? So in 2021, I was named one of the top four PMO influencers of the year. And in 2020, I was named one of the top 15 PMO leaders around the world. So really honored to be recognized um, industry-wide. Okay, we got a great agenda. We're going to cover PMO manager's expectations. We'll talk about building a PMO, running a PMO, PMO reports, PMO day-to-day -day operations, PMO resources, and then we'll wrap up and give you a ton of information. But before we begin, the question is, are you ready for this role? So PMO managers' roles and responsibilities, right? Very, very different than a tactical project manager, tactical portfolio manager, program manager. Let's look at what a PMO manager does. Not all PMOs are created equal, and therefore not all PMO managers are created equal, right? There's no question you're going to have to adapt your skill sets how um, to your PMO. PMI has done a great job with the talent triangle across leadership, ta technical project management, and strategic and business management. And I think not only the applicable PMO managers, they're applicable by project managers, which is why PMI built them and how they built them. But I think PMO managers can um, really greatly value by using that same chart or that same triangle. So let's look at that. There's 11 different components, helper, advisor, teacher, facilitator, auditor, and I'll let you go around that circle. You'll see leadership, you'll see strategic business management, you'll see technical project management, right? As a PMO manager, you're going to play every one of these roles. You're going to be a motivator, you're going to be a teacher, you're going to be a negotiator, you're going to be an HR manager, right? These are key core concepts of being a PMO manager, and these are things that you really do need to adapt and get good at if you're going to be successful in this role. I can't stress that enough. So I have a question. Are you ready for this role? Are there skills that you need to skill up on? Do you need to improve on some of those things like HR manager, negotiator, motivator, right? Well, I'm here for you. Um, I want to introduce my coaching and mentoring program. You just go to buildoutpmptraining.com. You'll see that um, all the information there. I've had a coach and a mentor for years. I actually coach and mentor several clients. So really, really excited. I can get you into the list. I don't have a ton of slots open, but I can certainly try to find one for you that works for both of us. If you're going to be a PMO manager, you need the skills, you need the background, and you need someone who's done it 10 times before. All right, so really excited about that. Go check out that program. Let me know. We'll jump on a free 45-minute call, and we'll get you started in this journey. 
All right, let's jump into building a PMO. I think it's critically important that you travel and you go through these 12 steps of building your PMO, from starting with a plan to executive support to creating your staples. I put all this detail in my book, The PMO Lifecycle, Building, Running, and Shutting Down. These are the fundamental 12 steps that you're going to need to build a, P a solid foundation and a PMO in your organization. Don't avoid these steps. Don't hurry through these steps. Get these steps set up and established for your PMO, and then you can move to running your PMO. I think it's really important. I, the book says it. There's building a PMO, running a PMO, and of course shutting it down. There are three distinct phases and three phases that you have to treat separately. Okay, so it's really important. You got to have a foundation. Once you have a foundation, you can move to running the PMO. So, did you apply those steps? Because otherwise, I say stop the video now, pause the video, and go apply those steps, and then come back when you're actually ready to run the PMO. There's a fundamental difference between building a PMO and running a PMO, and we're getting you set up with that foundation first with those 12 steps, then we're gonna move into running. Make sense? Awesome. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move into running a PMO, okay? All right, so just like we did for building a PMO, we need a schedule, right? This stuff doesn't happen overnight. P building and running PMOs are marathons, they're not sprints, okay? Let's be very, very clear. You need a project schedule, you can go to dowpublishingllc.com slash store. You can grab that schedule, it's part of the book. You really need the book as well, but that's okay. You can grab the schedule. And what you're going to do is you're going to see four fundamental areas. Develop executive reports, develop PMO specific reports, PMO day-to-day -day operations, and then PMO resources, which is mentoring and buddy systems. These are done in order. These are done really in how the priorities are set when you're building and starting to run your PMO. These are the things that you should be uh, looking to do. You've already built the core components. Now you're going to go to run. And now this is why we're starting with reporting. Okay. So the first component is your executive reports. It's critical you give the executives the information that they need to understand how your PMO is running scorecards, milestone reports, dashboards, right? Whatever the case may be, you want to give the executives the reports they need to build out your, um, your information so they know exactly what's going on in the programs and projects in your, in your PMO. So here's a great dashboard. I'm going to just give you a minute to look at this. You've got project ID, you've got project name, the health, you've got red, you've got yellow, you've got green, you've got some notes on it. But this just screams dashboard. This screams, this is exactly what's happening in the PMO. Your executives will love this. They're going to love the colors. They're going to love the quickness of, of getting the information and seeing exactly where the projects are tracking. For the colorblind folks, you could put some, um, you put the text in the box, right? And that's going to really help for folks that are colorblind, which some of your executives may be. You could do um, some patterns as well. But these are the types of things that you need to think about when you're building out dashboards. Okay, the next one is a milestone report. Here's another very easy to consume. You've got the ID, the name, what phase of the project. This is, of course, just waterfall, but that's okay, predictive. You'll see this one's in test and this one's in development. This one's green and it's a go live, right? Very quick, very easy, very valuable, very quick to consume. Um, your executives are going to love this. Of course, you can do an agile one or scaled agile, whatever the case may be. The point is, you is you need dashboards and you want to make sure that your executives see how your PMO is executing. Okay. And then what we've got is a resource report. So your executives are going to want to know what resources are working on, what projects are they assigned to, what are they billing, what are they estimating, when are they out of office, all those particular things, especially if those out of offices are long, like, you know, maternity leaves or some sort of leaves, right? So your executives will want some sort of resource reports. So get those set up as well. So I can sit here all day and build you up dashboards. 
It's really, really important that I don't build them, but your executives tell you what they need and you get those, exec those dashboards in place. It's really, really important that the executives understand how your organization is executing, how are the programs and projects going, and that they can go to a place that they can see real time for that data, okay? So getting executives reports and dashboards set up is critical for you running a successful PMO. So as we wrap up on executive reporting, it is a critical aspect of keeping your PM going for years and years. I've done 10 of them. It's, I'm telling you, executive reporting is critical, right? It's a, and it's a continual process and it's a great thing because once they get going on these dashboards and they start loving these dashboards, they're gonna want more and more and more dashboards. And that just sets you up to be in a great spot to really providing valuable data for them. Spend time with your executives, right? Make sure that the reports and the dashboards are working for them. Ask the colorblind question. Ask the text versus graphics question, right? But you want to get your executives the reports they need for you to be successful. Now, if you're struggling to build proper dashboards and reports, I have a course for you. It's on Power BI. It's called Power BI Dashboards and Reports class. Go to buildoutpmptraining.com, click the button, look at the information, look at this course. It's going to help you set up from the very beginning of installing Power BI all the way to creating dashboards and reports on project management data. You're going to love it, and I strongly suggest you get this set up. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna to move to PMO specific reports. So what does that mean? Well, these are the reports that you as a PMO manager, PMO director, PMO lead, whatever the case may be, what are you gonna to need to run your project? So once you have the specific reports set up for your executives, and of course you're gonna use those as well, they could be too detailed. They could not be at the right level, right? So you're going to need PMO, as a PMO manager, you're going to need specific reports for your environment. You're running a PMO here, right? So you need to know the information on how your programs or projects are executing. Of course you're going to use the same dashboards you give your executives because you want to make sure that data is right. You want to make sure that that data is accurate and up to date before your executives get it. So this is your first starting point. But you're going to also want to see dependencies, right? What are dependencies to, between the projects? You care as a PMO manager. You care about that. Your executives won't care about that as much. So here's one specific report you'll create and you won't give to your executives. Here's another one, a PMO cadence calendar. We'll talk about that coming up. Or a cadence calendar plus your major programs and projects. We'll talk about that coming up. But again, these are very specific reports to run your organization. PMO vacation calendar. You'd never give it to your executives, but you certainly need it for your organization. When you think about specific reports, you're really thinking about driving to how are the various components of the PMO being ran, right? There's too many reports to list on how many, like, and how much information that you can get, right, out of these reports. So, for example, some of the software, like uh, uh, Project Online or Monday.com or Primavera, whatever the case may be, all these project management softwares, they will create you a ton of different reports hundreds of different reports, right? And so it's really important to understand that the software itself has got reports in them. And then when you're looking at setting up reports for your PMO, based on the P's of your PMO, you're gonna do portfolio, program, and project, right? And we've seen those before. We've seen really those dashboards where, hey, what are my pro portfolio reports? What are my um, uh, program reports? What are my project reports? All leading to those dashboards. And we'll talk about that coming up. So as we look and we summarize around that, around just specific reports, don't get tied down or tongue-tied and creating massive amount of reports for your PMO outside of your executive reports you've already created, right? You want to limit that because it can get too confusing. You can spend all your time creating reports and that's really not what you want to do. You want to be aware that your executives will not want those day-to-day -day reports 
but you'll need them to help run your role, right? And then again, software packages, Project um, Online, uh, Primavera, all those various software packages have a ton of reports built in. Don't ignore those reports, but don't also underestimate the processes and procedures that need to be put in place for you to take advantage of that. Okay, so it's really, really important to get specific uh, PMO reports set up for your organization. Okay, now we're going to get into it. Now we're going to get into the day-to-day -day operations of running a PMO. What do I do? Many PMO managers struggle with this. They have no idea what to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Some don't know what to do, what reports to run, how involved do they get with the projects. Some are hotshot project managers that got moved to a PMO manager and they literally have no idea what to do. That list goes on and on. There's so much confusion out there and it is challenging sometimes, but it's important to understand you work with people who have done this before and will help you through that process. Okay, one of the most important aspects, and we just touched upon this really quickly, but one of the most important aspects a PMO manager can do is set up a PMO cadence calendar. I wanna dive a little deeper on that. I just showed you that, but I wanna click in because it's so important. In that, ca in that calendar, what you're going to do is you're going to set up specific key and key PMO meetings. PMO manager members will schedule around these meetings where possible because these meetings are key. PMO meetings are mandatory in attendance and gives the PMO managers the opportunity to understand exactly what's going on. Okay, so getting that PMO cadence calendar set up. Nothing happens on Monday. On Tuesday, we review the meetings. On Thursday, we do a bi-weekly meeting. On Friday, we get the status report sent, okay? So week two, a week three, week four, right? You're setting the cadence, you're driving the cadence of your PMO. I can't stress how important that is. Once you have the calendar set up and all your programs and your project meetings are set up, right, and you've got all the PMO meetings, now what you're going to do is you're going to fill them with program and project meetings, meaning the major, major programs and projects that are running in your organization, not all of them, but the major ones, you want to get on that calendar as well, right? So you should have those major programs and projects on your cadence calendar so you can see exactly what's happening across the board, right? If they're not on there, they're not important to the PMO and some of your big programs and projects need to really be on there. Once everything's documented, take another view of that calendar from a reporting perspective, meaning what reports are needed and when. So here's an example of that calendar. We've got uh, the project Bluetooth status meeting happens on Monday. The PMO review meeting, right? Project Atlas has got a status meeting on Wednesday. There's a bi-weekly LT meeting, right? You can see the intermixing of the PMO meetings and the programs and project meetings, and it really makes for an unbelievable valuable tool for how you're gonna drive your organization. And here's that PMO vacation calendar. I've done it across multiple PMOs. It's critical to get set up. You're gonna wanna know when people are coming and going in your organization. So get them on a standard PMO vacation calendar. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run into the steps of running a PMO. Right, remember we start with those four processes, right? Now we're at that PMO day-to-day -day operations. Well, what are the steps? Well, I've really defined 10 major steps. One is to find the color conditions. Two, set up the CR process. Three, develop and enhance the portfolio program and project playbooks. Four, to find the PMO priority list. Five, to find the PMO weekly checklist. Six, set up the project transition plans. Seven, develop the PMO templates. Eight, develop and execute the PMO reports. Nine, review and select PMO tools. 10, continue to support management and value discussions. Okay, so these are the 10 steps and the 10 components of running a PMO. Now, see how different they are from the 12 steps of building a PMO? 
right? This says nothing to do with a vision statement, nothing to do with a mission statement, nothing to do with a maturity model. Right, all of those are already established and already running. Now you can do these ne uh, next 10 steps. Okay, so let's jump into these, right? Every PMO is gonna require some key components that are critical to executing the PMO. From color definitions to CR processes to playbook, right? Regardless of what it is, PMO managers need to have these key items in place to run a successful PMO. Without these items, you will struggle to be successful. I guarantee you, if you don't have color conditions and you've got 35 or 40 projects all running and red, yellows, and greens mean completely different things, you are gonna struggle. If you don't have a CR process in place and scope changes happen all the time, you are gonna struggle. If you don't have, for example, if you don't have transition plans and PM, uh, project managers come and go, you are going to struggle. I can't stress enough how important this is, okay? So let's look at these again for the text-based people. Color definitions, CR processes, playbooks, priority list. I'll let you look through those. Okay, look at number 10 there, right? As a PMO manager, you're going to have to continue to sell the value of your PMO. There's great debate on should you sell it, should you not sell it. Yes, you're constantly selling. I've done this 10 times. I know what I'm talking about. You've got to be constantly selling. You're not sleazy in your selling. You're not overselling. But you've got to be showing the value. You've got to be delivering your projects. You've got to be hitting your dates. You've got to be showing up as a leader at the leadership table. If sell's the wrong word, okay, pick another word. But that's what you're doing, and that's how I've been successful across 10 PMOs. Let's start with number one, color definitions. Every PMO must have a definition for color. What does red mean? What does yellow mean? What does green mean? If it's not defined, the project managers will define it themselves and you are in trouble. Go with a basic. Red, project's in trouble. Yellow is not on track. Green, everything's on track and everything's good. Keep it simple. Right? When you use shades of red, shades of yellow, shades of green, it's ridiculous. Just keep it simple, keep it clear. When you're running a PMO across multiple projects, this is a key thing that you need to get set up. Number two, a change request process, right? Here's just one of the hundreds of examples. You have to have a CR process. You need to be able to change and control scope on your projects right? It's very, very important for predictive and waterfall projects. You have to have a CR process. I would debate in agile. You have to have some sort of change control process as well. I know there's going to be great debates on that. I get it. But the fundamental disappointment when you tell a customer that you, you're going to build this report and at the end of the sprint, they get this report and they don't get the report. There is a fundamental disappointment that that customer has that Agile needs to solve. So do a CR, don't do a CR process, but as a PMO manager, you're going to have to tackle that, and I strongly suggest you set one up. Playbooks. When we talk about portfolio, program, and project manager playbooks, right? depending on the four Ps of your PMO, you're going to have to tell these various roles what are they doing. These are the operating manuals, right? What do you do as a program manager? What do you do as a project manager? What do you do as a portfolio? Otherwise, if you don't set the foundation, these individuals won't march in the same way you need them to march. That's not scalable for a large PMO. Think about this for a sec. You've got 5, 10, 15 project managers. You want the project managers to be doing the same things. You know, where this is not a bad thing. You want same stash reports. You want colors to be the same. You want CR processes to be the same. I'm not trying to stifle anyone. I'm not trying to kill creativity. What I'm trying to do is scale. It's all about scale. We can have great debates on this, but you still need individuals to be using the same thing to create that same experience. 
We can't have 10 different waterfall methodologies or 10 different agile methodologies. It's got to be scalable. So many people forget that point. So what's in a portfolio manager playbook? Scope, charter, metrics, roles and responsibilities, WBS kickoff meetings. What's in a program manager playbook? Same scenario, oversight tables, benefits, scope, program, status reports. You're running a large program with multiple projects. You've got to have some consistency in how you're executing and people want to know at the program level, how is it, how is it going? And then at the project management level, same thing, kickoff meetings, project management plan, lessons learned, calm plans, races, governance, escalations, right? All that goodness of running a project, a program, and a portfolio, all should be in a playbook. Every PMO will have a variety of these roles, right? Most of them have portfolio manager, program manager, project manager, right? Whatever they have, you gotta have these operating models in place. If they don't scale, and I, you've seen this before, if they don't scale um, and they don't have that consistency, you won't scale and that's going to be a huge problem for a PMO. Okay, the next on the list is a priority list. You have to have a priority list. Every PMO needs a priority list. However you do it through scores, weighted scores, whatever the case may mean, you need one to ten, one to five. You need a number one. Teams need to know what's the most important project in the organization. What's second, what's third? They need to make trade-off decisions, right? They need to set priorities. If you've got one person working on the first five projects, that person is going to need to know where to spend most of their time. Every PMO needs a priority list. Priority lists need to be worked through the executives, need to be worked through leadership. You have to have a place that people can go to. Again, great Power BI dashboard, great Tableau dashboard, whatever the case may be, but get a priority list in place. The next one's around the weekly checklist. I can't stress how important this is. We talked about playbooks. We talked about what do we expect the portfolio program and project manager to do. Now it's around getting down what do we expect them to do on a weekly basis. I want my project managers to create status reports. I want them to update their schedules. I want them to update their risk and issue logs, right? Whatever that list is, you're going to set the expectations with the project managers of exactly what you want to do. So go to your playbook. You wrote all that goodness in your playbook. Pull out the key things that you want them to do on a week to week basis. Okay, it, it's really, really important that you've got that consistency and you got that scale. So do that as well. It's really important. All right. When running a PMO, you have to set up transition plans. What's a transition plan? It's a document that describes all the key areas of a project that allows one project manager to take it over from another. Ensure you set up a transition plan for every project in your PMO, every role in your PMO. Even if the project manager is not leaving, get a transition plan set up. It's critical. Without it, handing off a project is much more complex. It takes much longer. People have no idea where to start. Get transition plans in place. They are critical components to a project. Get them in place even if the person's not leaving. I do it for every role in the PMO. I can't stress enough. What do they have in them? Location of project documents key links, meetings, calendars, events, stakeholders, distribution lists, right? You guys figure out what you want to put in there, but this is the theme. One project manager taking over for another project manager. What documents do they need? That's critical to get that set up. Then what you're going to do as a PMO manager, you're going to set up templates. Right? What do the templates look like? Well, this is your opportunity to market. This is your opportunity to create logos. This is your opportunity to create colors around kickoff decks and go no go decks, go live decks, go live templates, emails, right? These are various templates and processes that you're going to have put in place. They'll have the same look and feel, they'll have the same color conditions. But again, it's that scalability. So get a series of PMO templates set up and you have all your project managers use them as they execute on their project. 
Okay, let's look at, we saw these before. Let's look at the three buckets of reports. Portfolio, program, and project. Past, current, future. All, of course, going into a dashboard. And I've got an amazing uh, Power BI class to really help you with that. Okay, and then we're going to look at a set of tools. Every PMO is going to need tools. There's a million salesmen out there, portfolio, program, and project management software products, and there's a ton of salesmen that will tell you their tool is going to do this, their tool is going to do that. From a portfolio, UMT, Primavera, Project, Project for the Web, Clarity, Compuware, right? Um, program and Project. Project Desktop, WBS Schedule, At Risk, Delta, Risky Project. There's hundreds and hundreds of software products out there. Again, not all software products will do everything the salesperson says they will do. Be very, very careful with that. I can't stress enough on that. And then number 10 is continue to support and, ma and management in the value conversation, right? Answer these questions. What value is your PMO providing? Why do we need this in the PMO? What happens if we shut down the PMO? What's the impact, right? Always continue to have that value conversation, continue to sell. Great debate on selling, I get it. Uh, but there's a component of selling that you have to do and really supporting what your PMO doing and what value is it bringing, okay? So let's get into there. Let's summarize the day to day. 10 key components, define your color conditions, number one, all the way down to continue support management and value discussions. CR processes, playbooks, priority lists, the, that list is right there, screenshot it, pause the video, but check, 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 check across the board. You've got those set up, you've done the building, now you've done the running, and now you're in a great shop for running in a world-class PMO. We cover the top 10 areas in running a PMO from a day-to-day -day perspective, right? A lot of items there, right? But these are needed to be successful. These areas will be valid in most PMOs today, regardless of your industry. Get those set up. You don't think uh, construction projects have red, yellow, and green? Of course they do. Research, um, you know, IT. Healthcare, right? They all have red and green. They all have scope issues. They all have resources, right? You're going to want all those good key components. Take the time, build out each for your PMO, and you're going to run yourself a world class PMO. All right, let's go into the last section PMO resources. So we covered executive reports, we covered specific reports, we covered day to day operations. Now let's look at resources. I can't stress enough how important it is for a PMO manager to care about their resources. Understand that you're driving an organization. The resources in your organization have mortgages, they have health care, they have wives, they have husbands, they have kids, right? You need to set up an environment to help them be successful. Um, what I have done before are things called PMO mentoring programs, PMO buddy systems, right? And a mentoring program is much more formal. Uh, they can be tied to performance reviews. Buddy systems a lot less formal, but both of them are extremely valuable for your organization. So let's have a quick look. So from a mentoring perspective, right, many companies will offer an employee mentoring program that pairs employees with like careers to learn and grow from each other. I love mentoring programs. PMO should have them as well, right? These programs are either offered as standalone if the company doesn't have them or supplement the company's offerings, but you should build a PMO mentoring program. You want a nature and and really nature, you, right? Nature your employees. You want to make sure that they know you care about their careers. Make them one year in length. Get it set up. Get it formally set up. Get people to sign off on it, right? You make all roles, all employees, and all roles be allowed to be part of this. But get a mentoring program set up. It's, it's going to be an extremely valuable resource management program that you can create. And your people will love it. I've documented it all in the book. It's all available. It's all there for you. Um, the buddy system, a lot less formal, right? Less rules. More of a like pairs, but there's no mentor-mentee relationship. 
They're just two, two people helping each other out, sharing ideas, sharing concerns, bouncing ideas off each other, using one as a sounding board. But the buddy system is a very, very valuable tool as well. What are some guidelines, right? Buddies, uh, uh, buddies commit to the program for a certain amount of time. PMO buddies share ideas, suggestions, best practices. They commit to one or two buddy meetings a month, right? They commit to being open and honest with each other. If it's not working, let us know and we'll switch it out, right? Neither employee buddy is obligated to take the leadership role. And I think that's a key component and that's why it's less formal because neither is really the lead there. So as we summarize that, we covered two critical tools that will help you set your PMO up to support your team members, right? With the mentoring program, it's going to require more formality, more processes, but the payoff is tremendous. With the buddy system, less formal, less processes, but you can start it immediately. You don't need anyone's approval. And again, supporting your PMO team members is critical, ensuring they are happy and they will stick with you for years and years. Okay, time to wrap up. We've gone through a lot of information here. We cover many different areas to run a successful PMO. Each of these components are critical to your success in managing your organization, right? Don't underestimate how much time you'll spend in justifying your PMO. So that was number 10. So be ready, be prepared for that conversation. Have your elevator speech ready. Sell, sell, sell. And it's not a negative sell. It's not a sleazy sell. It's constantly selling and promoting. The, uh, it will be a daily routine, right? And so when you're asked what value do you bring, what value do you bring, you want to constantly have that conversation. My name is Bill Dow. Here's all my contact information. My two main books, the service offering books up on Amazon as well. Bill Dow at DowPublishingLLC.com. Get me on LinkedIn. Get me on Twitter. Get me on all these various sites. Um, my coaching is available. BillDowPMPTraining.com for coaching. I've been coaching people for years and years. I've got a couple of spots available. Come definitely reach out and see if that's something you want to do. The Power BI Dashboard and Reports class, that's ready to go. Um, again, if you want to learn Power BI, you want to build project management da dashboards and reports, this is a great class for you. Super, super excited about that. Happy to jump on a call as well and we can talk about that one. That is all I have today. I want to thank you. I want to thanks for your time. Everyone's time is so valuable. I hope you find this valuable. Um, and then what I will do is I will open it up for questions. I'm going to stop the recording now, but I'm going to open it up for the questions. And I want to thank you all for joining. Have a great day. Thanks.